Do you have any favorite books that you love to read in January? Hi, I'm Amy Murray from Teaching Exceptional Kinders, and today I'm here to chat about my favorite read-alouds for kindergarten in winter or the month of January. So let's start by the topics that we would cover in the month of January. For nonfiction, we talked a lot about polar animals and hibernation. Sometimes we would cover hibernation in December, sometimes it was more of a January thing, it depended on what we had time for. So those were our big themes for nonfiction books, and then I like to find some books that fit in with those topics um, for our fiction read-alouds as well. So let's take a look at some of my favorites. Before we get too far into things, um, you can find all the links to the books that I chat about today down below. They are Amazon affiliate links, um, which means I may earn a very small commission if you choose to purchase using those links, but you can find them on your own as well. And while you're down there, please like and subscribe so you don't miss any of our other book recommendation videos and all things kindergarten. All right, let's take a look. First up, I have a couple of books by Jan Brett. She writes and illustrates her own books. If you are not familiar with her, um, she's got some awesome illustrations. We'll start with the mitten. Um, just really good illustrations, and she always tells a story within a story. So, like, the, um, border you can see here has Nikki, the little boy in the story, um, and the grandma there. But so there's the main story happening and then the frame is always telling a second story. And it's interesting for kids to see as well. The mitten is not unique to Jam Brett. There are different versions of the mitten, but basically that little boy begs his grandma to make mittens that are white and she's afraid he will lose one. Of course he does, drops it in the snow and then the animals find it and they go into the mitten to get warm for winter until the end when the bear gets in or the mouse, sorry, the mouse comes in and sneezes and makes the bear sneeze and everybody flies out of the mitten and the mitten gets returned to Nikki. He finds it, but it is way overstretched. So that's the mitten. It's great for sequencing and different activities with that and retelling and uh, also for predicting because if you teach them to use the um, the frames here, they can predict what animal is coming next. So the mitten. Now, sometimes I hear, and I used to hear from teachers that I taught with, they like to do the mitten in older grades as well. So first grade, second grade. So if you're looking for an alternative, the hat is a great alternative, also by Jan, Brett as well. And this one, Hedgie, the little hedgehog, gets stuck in a stocking or a sock and he can't get it off and he runs through everywhere and all the animals make fun of him. And he's so worried because he won't even fit in his den with this on his head. And once again, there's the second story in the frames as well. And Lisa finally catches up with Hedgie. You can see her running to him. And he's just so upset that everyone keeps laughing at him. It's like, oh, look, the girl's laughing at me too and she pulls it off of him. But at the end, the little girl realizes all of her other wool things are off, and if you watch throughout the story, as you turn the pages, more things are missing from her clothesline until the end where they're all gone, and that's because the other animals have taken them all and then she's got to go get them off of them because they're trying to stay warm for the winter like the hedgehog was trying to stay warm for the winter. So it's a cute story. Again, great for sequencing. Um, really interesting how Jan tells stories within stories and that's fun for kids to see and catch on to as well. So the hat is great. You can pair them together, the hat and the mitten, and kind of compare. They both have animals. They both are sequencing books. So there's lots of opportunities there. 
Then if you do choose to read the hat, this is my last Jan Brett book, I promise it's not just all Jan Brett, but this is called The Snowy Nap, and look, Hedgie's back. So this is meant to be a companion book to the hat, and it's about Hedgie, and you know, he hears from all of these other animals about all the fun things he's missing during, while he's hibernating, and so he tries to stay up so he doesn't miss anything, and it turns out he can't stay up the whole time, but he does make some memories. So again, same stories within a story and awesome illustrations. So those go together quite nicely. And if you like Jan Bright, you could do a whole author study and include lots of her other books as well. There's lots of opportunities there. All right, switching gears a bit. The Snowy Day by Ezra Jack Keats is great if you talk about snow or if you have snow um, or snow days. Are they still a thing where you are? Uh, it's just a great book. It's also great if you don't live in a city and if you have kids who aren't used to the city because this book takes place in a city. Peter. And these illustrations are cool for they're not as detailed and all of that as Jambrett's, but they're neat and the watercolors and it's just cool. And his outfit is so iconic. So it snows in the city and Peter goes out to play and he has these adventures and then he brings a snowball home in his pocket and that's great for predictions as well so see he's got his snowball here and then his mother's he's telling his mom all about his adventures as he gets ready for bath he takes a bath and then while he slept he dreamt he dreamed that the sun melted all the snow but when he woke up it was snowing again so that even though his I skip this part. There we go. Even though his snowball had melted, which was sad, he woke up to more snow and he can try to make a new snowball again. But he also lives in an apartment and has kids across the hallway from him and things like that. So if your students aren't used to that, it's a neat way to uh, get them familiar with different vocabulary terms and what it might mean to live in an apartment building and those kinds of things. So there's some good inferencing and uh, vocab opportunities in the snowy day as well. There is a video on net, mm, might not still be on Netflix, but at one point it was on Netflix um, of the snowy day. It does tie in a little bit of a Christmas theme, but it is still fun to watch in conjunction with the story. All right, my last, I think this is my one, my last fiction books is A Silly Snowy Day. I don't know if this one is still available um, in print. I did find it on Amazon, but I believe it's a used book. This one was from Scholastic years ago. In fact, it has my maiden name, so a lot of years ago. But this one is cute. It's about a tortoise who, sort of like the snowy day, wants to experience winter. And he's not happy that he has to hibernate. And so he goes through all of these different adventures and they all the other animals say, you know, you're being ridiculous. Why are you out in the snow? And then eventually he makes his way home. But it's a fun, again, great for sequencing, great for talking about hibernation and tying all of that in. If you can find it, it's worth it. All right. And then another book that is fiction but it's a great tie-in for your hibernation is hibernation station obviously these are about animals who hibernate it's got great illustrations you know it's time to get ready to hibernate in the fall and it goes through and it's like this pretend train where everybody's getting on and it goes through different animals who hibernate throughout the whole book so that one's groundhog and then they come to different parts on their train. And it's just, it's a quick read, but it's great to tie in hibernation and you can use it to brainstorm different animals who hibernate. And while we're on the hibernation train, <laughs> I have a couple of favorite nonfiction books and I could not find them in print. So I would 
look in Scholastic or maybe Amazon for some other hibernation books. This one's called All About Hibernation by Tori Kassara. Again, well, not again, but really great photos and talking about what hibernation is, when the seasons change, and all of that great stuff about hibernation in kid-friendly terms, but still being academic enough. And it has like a glossary and labels and things. So if you're talking about uh, nonfiction components isn't the right word, but parts of nonfiction books. This has a lot of those good things in it. You know, like there's a bold word and that kind of thing and definitions and glossaries and table of contents. So hibernate, all about hibernation. And the other one that I always would read was why do animals hibernate? Again, kids love to see real pictures of animals and um, what the hiber what hibernation looks like and all of that. So, and this one also has like an index and just have a glossary, words to know. So a little bit of a glossary and just good for introducing nonfiction to your kindergartners. Okay, so the other theme I like to cover in January's Arctic animals. Word of caution, penguins are not Arctic animals. They are polar animals. They live down in the southern hemisphere for the most part so they are not arctic animals they don't live up at the north pole like polar bears and arctic foxes and those kind of animals puffins do but not penguins so don't mistake that when you're teaching them in kindergarten all right this book is called arctic animals it is by tori kasara as well she must have done lots of things for scholastic because I really liked all of her nonfiction books and they are hard to find on Amazon, but I will link the ones that I could find on Amazon. So the polar bear is on the front here, but this one is about all different Arctic animals. So you've got reindeer, Arctic wolf. So it was great for introducing uh, Arctic animals to the kids and you could read like little sections at a time. So here's the fox and talks about how they camouflage and change colors throughout the year. Really good information. Again, it has a glossary and all different things and animals. Look how cute the seals are in kid friendly terms. So the Arctic animals is a great book. And then there are also these other guys. And again, I don't know if these are still in print, but I will look. So you have Arctic fox, narwhal, and polar bear. So these are just, I don't even know if they, oh, this is Kate Marsico. I'll link the ones that I can find uh, on Amazon for you below. But again, just nice nonfiction books that teach about specific animals. So this one's the polar bear, and then the fox, and the narwhal, and there's a couple others that I have as well. There is a penguin version of these, but again, you'll notice she says polar animals instead of Arctic. So they're good to use as well. All right, that is all of my favorite books that we used in January. I know there were a bunch. I will link them and the blog post down below. Tell me while you're down there, what's your favorite story? Did I leave it out or was it included? All right, until next time. Oh, here's how to get in touch with me if you have any questions about anything at all. And be on the lookout for our penguin book recommendations or check out any of our other monthly and seasonal recommendations as well. All right, until next time, have an exceptional day.